Hello and welcome to the Final Fantasy XIV leveling guide. Maybe you're a new player, or an alt leveler, or maybe you're a World of Warcraft refugee, maybe even a stream sniper to your favorite Twitch streamer like your boy Asmongold. This video has you covered. Now before we dive in, a word from our sponsors. Kono bangi mo wa garan no sponsor no tekyo de okurashimasu. Final Fantasy XIV here are a few important things to know before you start on your leveling journey, for some easy bonus EXP. First off, you're gonna want to join an FC. An FC is basically your clan, your guild, and basically they give out free buffs during the day and it can be anything like extra EXP in battle, or crafting, or gathering, or even making your teleports cost cheaper. So they are a definite must-have for any person. I know what you're thinking, you're, you just started your adventure, how are you going to find an FC, I don't have any friends, etc, etc. But there are plenty of ways to find an FC. There's even a community finder online that you can use that I'll put in the link down below. There's constant adverts going up for people to join FCs all the time in the city. Just be on the lookout and if nothing's biting, just maybe shout yourself, put yourself out there, be like, hey, I want to join an FC, can someone invite me? And that's it. You don't need to interact with anyone or anything. Just make sure that they're constantly having buffs up on a daily basis so that you can get the most out of your leveling experience. Next is to buy some food. You can get the 3% EXP buff just from eating food for 30 minutes. And you can eat the same food twice to make it last for 60 minutes. They're, ba they're very cheap and you can find them in any culinary and vendor in the cities or plenty of other areas. This comes in especially handy when you're AoE grinding or killing lots of mobs in one go in a dungeon. Because after 33 mobs, you've basically gotten an extra mob's worth of XP. Now so far, you have 13% of EXP to start from level 1. Next up are Guild Hests. Guild Hests are like mini, quite easy trials to do for some bonus EXP. Its purpose is basically similar to the Battle Hall, where you learn about basic group mechanics. It's kind of in an introductory sort of feel. You unlock them at level 10 after completing simply the Hest, and then speaking to a Battle Warden in one of the following locations. They are only really worth doing once for the bonus XP, and then maybe at earlier levels for the Duty Roulette for Guild Hests. But once you've reached level 40, you've unlocked all the Guild Hests you can do, and you want to kind of scrub out doing Guild Hests after that point. Upon reaching level 15, you're going to want to go to the Hall of Novice. To get there, you're going to need to go in with a Disciple of War or Magic and then go find an NPC called the Smith. They can be recognized as the little sprout icons that you can find in your main city or in some other locations that you've probably leveled in. It's basically a tutorial-like experience where the game teaches you your role and your priorities, how to dodge out of AoEs and how to effectively heal, tank and DPS. For a lot of you this is going to be a no-brainer and GG easy, but you might learn a thing or two. And make sure you finish it all the way to the end, as in the end you're going to get some decent looking armor, a leveling ring that gives you 30% extra EXP and basically works until level 30. Already that's a huge bonus of the experience just to level 30 and it'll affect all your alts and everything like that. Next is an honorable mention. If you pre-order the expansion, you are able to get an earring that basically gives you 30% additional bonus EXP until quite a high level. Right now that's up to level 70, and it does work with the ring as well. So if you are below level 30, you're going to get a huge ton of EXP leveling your alts from 1 to 30 insanely quickly, and it's just a must-have if you're planning to play this game in the long run. The next priority is your class quest. This is how you unlock skills for your class and basically how you get a job crystal. Now an important thing to mention, for new players especially, is that once you reach level 30, you're going to get a class quest that basically evolves you from your current class to a job. For example, your marauder will now become a warrior, um, your conjurer will now become a white mage, etc, etc. This is all applicable to a Realm Reborn classes. Now, once you get that job crystal, you're gonna want to equip it because after level 30, if you are seen not wielding your job crystal, you're going to probably be bullied and someone's gonna notice it and they're gonna remind you and 
feels kind of silly not to utilize those extra moves that you're going to get and everything like that. Next, we're going to talk about high EXP sources that you can do whilst you're catching up to content just to maximize your EXP gains, or just to avoid a main scenario burnout. First up is your daily duty roulettes. Upon reaching level 16 and after completing your first dungeon, you can unlock your first daily duty roulette. Second is to do the highest level dungeon that you can for your level. DPS might want to opt for Palace of the Dead or Heaven on High route. This is because DPS queue times are much longer than that of tanks and healers. But since Palace and Heaven on High don't have the typical party requirement, your queues will be much faster. This allows tanks and healers the kind of luxury to choose if they want to go into Palace of the Dead or to go into a dungeon. To unlock Palace of the Dead, you need to be a level 17 Disciple of War or Magic, and then speak to Nojiro Marujiro in New Gridania. Then you'll have to go to Corymil, hand in the quest, and then you'll have access to Palace of the Dead and be able to enter it on a character you wish to level. You'll notice once you enter that you're level 1 with your own independent EXP bar than what you had when you were outside. Don't worry, as Palace has its own leveling system. And you'll be able to experience your class skills and abilities actually all the way up to level 60. However, if you don't have your job crystal and you're entering it uh, below level 30, do keep in mind that you won't have access to your job skills because you don't have the job crystal and are therefore considered like a level 60 Lancer or Marauder or whichever class you're playing on. Heaven on High also does respectively have the same system, but starts from 61 to 70, and it is also a much more vibrant and brighter place than Palace of the Dead, which can be quite relieving. So how exactly does Palace of the Dead work? You're basically going to have to start from floor 1 and kill a certain amount of mobs each floor for the exit to kind of open up and be accessible. Uh, you'll face basically 9 floors in total and the 10th floor being the boss level. And you must complete the duty without your party being KO'd as if they are, if you guys do end up getting KO'd, you will have to re queue and you'll suffer any potential EXP loss that you would have gotten after you have killed the boss. Also, furthermore, any armor or arms level that you gained in that run will be lost, which I'll go through in a second. On the way, you'll basically notice three different coffers scattered throughout the rooms. You'll have a gold coffer, a bronze coffer, and a silver coffer. Um, Basically, the gold coffer will reward you any useful buffs that can be used to make your run easier, such as more damage, AoE, CC, and even the potential to find hidden treasures that contain minions, materia, and some other rewards. The silver coffer is what you want to focus on. And basically, this is the way you'll be leveling your armor and weapon level, also known as arm level, as your gear doesn't really matter in here. You can literally enter naked and it wouldn't change a thing. So with each armor level, you're going to become more tankier, and with each arm level, you're going to basically do more damage. So while you're speed leveling, you usually just want to go out of your way for silver coffers early on so that you get the minimum requirement for each floor. And uh, as the most annoying part is getting through the first 50 floors. And typically, people's armor and weapon are relatively low until they build a few levels, so don't be surprised if you wipe on floors maybe between 30 to 50 as you'll have to probably reset your progress and start from floor one again in, if you do wipe but you don't have to worry as much as you'll still be gaining your aether pool levels up to the floors before so you'll still be able to continue on and level them up from scratch again and still be able to get exp for your main character even going through floors one again Congratulations, you've reached level 60, you've done as much palace as you can, and now you're completely burnt out from the place, and you're wondering, how are you going to level from 60 to 61 without palace being your main source of XP? 
Now, you can either do two things. You can go for the level 59 dungeon. Uh, what I would recommend is hopefully saving your duty roulettes for level 60, um, just so you can do that because that is basically the death zone and you just want to get that completely out of the way as soon as you can. So now you're 61, uh, you want to go and unlock Heaven on High. You basically need to have completed the MSQ up to the level 63 quest Tide Goes In, Imperials Go Out, and done the floor and done up to floor 50 in Palace of the Dead. Then you want to fly over to the Ruby Sea and speak to Hamakaze, who will give you a quest called Knocking on Heaven's Door. After that, he'll tell you to go and meet Kyuse, and then you'll have and then you'll be able to access Heaven on High and start from level 1. The concept is the same with Palace. Um, but with less floors needed to complete, as you'll be able to start from the first floor and then very soon be able to spam floors 20 to 30 for EXP. So you don't have to go through the struggle of having to go through 50 floors just to get to that juicy EXP spot. Next we're going to go to slightly different methods of obtaining AXP. Um, they are not as efficient as the methods I've described before, but they are still very uh, valid and if you're someone who enjoys questing, you can do side quests. Um, there's even the ones with the with a sort of a blue little quest marker with a plus, which means it is something you can unlock, so those are definitely great to do as well in case you want to unlock additional content or, or anything like that. Uh, sometimes they reward emotes or even unlocks dungeons at higher levels uh, that are a really great experience and, and some of them are just incredible. Another source of EXP is from Fates. They're normally these purple looking events that you see on your map. You can also uh, delve into the challenge log. Uh, you'll unlock the challenge log. At level 15, you will get the quest uh, Rising to the Challenge. Uh, players can go speak to uh, Itolwan in Limsa Lominsa. Players must first complete the Call of the Sea, either in whatever city that you started in, being Gridania, Limsa, or Ulda. At level 47, you'll unlock squadron missions with your Grand Company after you attain the suitable Grand Company rank. And this is basically similar to the garrison or the mission table in World of Warcraft, uh, where you will basically be sending recruits on missions, and once your squadron ranks up, you'll be able to join them in, in actual dungeons, uh, leveling dungeons, which can be particularly great, especially for um, DPS, and kind of doing it at your own pace and comfort, especially if you feel that you have to AFK a lot. Later on, once you unlock Shadowbringers, you'll actually unlock the trust system, which is basically kind of the same system as your squadrons had where you'll join a set of NPCs and go in as whatever role you please. Uh, however, they do tend to be quite slow compared to um, your regular party, but uh, it does give you that freedom again uh, to do it the way you, you would like to. So if that's your thing, go for it. And uh, obviously you'll be getting all the loot to yourself, so that's a great bonus too. Uh, just be in mind, it is going to take a while. Beast Tribe quests don't unlock until you've reached level 41 of the main scenario quests, so make sure you've done your MSQ up to 41 so you can start them. So now you can do Beast Tribe daily quests, which have a certain limit of how many you can do in a day. You'll basically gain reputation with your selected Beast Tribe and unlock rewards as you rank up, such as mounts, minions, glamour, and so on. Uh, they typically take less than 5 minutes to complete and are really relatively quick. So load up that SSD and get to them. You'll basically have Beast Tribes for each expansion, so do so accordingly.
now it's time to do some hunts. Hunts are basically uh, rare mobs that spawn throughout the world that can be killed and for basically hunt seals or for EXP. Hunts can be obtained from the hunt board, where you can get daily and weekly hunts. They'll basically give you some hunts to do and you'll just go out like you do with your hunting log and find the mobs and kill them for some easy XP. In order to unlock these hunts first, you must reach second lieutenant in your grand company and have at least done let the hunt begin of the main scenario quest. Now you can go and unlock the Wondrous Tales journal. You first start off speaking with the unctuous adventurer in Idoshir, and he'll give you a quest. After completing the quest, you will basically speak with Chloe to obtain the Wondrous Tales journal, and this is where it can seem a little confusing, but basically you're kind of playing bingo in a way, but your objective is to get the best odds you can in getting three lines with the stickers you collect. Now to get these stickers, you have to complete the objectives given to you, which can be found by mouse overing the pictures on the left. Once you complete an objective, it gets crossed out from the list and you're given a sticker. So now you'll notice the second chance button. Basically, if you have an easy objective that you feel you want to keep collecting stickers, then you can keep retrying that objective with the retry button. Keep in mind, if you do retry one of the objectives, it will cross out another one at random. So make sure you at least do all the easy ones you can first before retrying any of them. Once you reach seven seals, you want to use your second chance points for shuffle. Now I know you can use them at three as well, but it's not really ideal to use them at that point because there's just no point. Um, so you want to shuffle them when you're when you have around seven, and this will either increase or decrease your odds in getting the lines. So you want to try to aim for the highest chance to get either two or three lines. But sometimes if you're comfortable with get, getting at least a guaranteed one, then that's okay too, because second chance points can be hard to come by once you've used all of them. Second chance points are also obtained from first time dutiers, which means if the, someone in your party is doing a trial or a dungeon for the first time, you will get that second chance option at the end of the run. Last but not least, finally, we have Bostra and Sadnor leveling. Now this is for alt leveling, as you won't unlock this until you have at least finished the main scenario quest for Shadowbringers. So in advance, congrats. Once unlocked, you can then enter between level 71 and 80 and start doing fates inside, and skirmishes that also pop up will also help you into getting levels. Ideally, you want to be on a quest step that you can do your Shadowbringers relic quest at the same time to kill two birds with one stone. Hey guys, thank you for watching. Uh, this is the first time I've done uh, any editing on this scale, uh, so it was a very difficult uh, time, but I had a lot of fun with it, and I hope that you've learned a few things or two. I know I've probably rambled on on some parts like Palace of the Dead, uh, but I felt that a sort of introductory um, lesson was needed for them because it is it can be very confusing for a new player um so if you'd like to see any smaller guides in particular uh to anything i've spoken about to go a bit more in depth uh i can probably uh work on that next uh but thank you so much for watching and appreciate and have a great day